What's up, guys? Justin here with the SketchUp Free Essentials. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some tips that make navigating around in your model super easy. Stick around to the later part of this video because I'm going to talk about some great tips for navigating model interiors. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, and so first off, a lot of the time when you're working in a SketchUp model, uh, you go back to the same views over and over again. And so I highly recommend that if you have views that you're going to over and over again, you go over into your scenes section in SketchUp and you save those views. So for example, if I keep coming back to an overall view like this one, I'm just going to add a scene. So I'm just going to go into my scenes section after clicking on this button, add a scene, and we're just going to name this something like overall view. And so now what that means is that means within the scenes section of my tray, Right here, I can click on this view in order to get back to it. Now, this not, might not seem like a big deal for your exterior views. And so when you start getting into interior scenes like this one, that can be especially valuable because you spend a lot of time trying to navigate back to locations like this. If you just add a scene, then it's really easy to navigate to those different locations just by clicking between them like this. Okay, second of all, especially when you start working with interior scenes like this, it's really easy to accidentally get stuck in a wall or something like that. Um, one of the tools that I use a lot when I start getting into interiors, and I just need to kind of start over again, is you can jump over into your toolbar right here. You can click on the option for zoom extents. So when you do a zoom extents, what that's going to do is that's going to zoom your camera view all the way out so you can see everything in your model. So if you ever get lost in your model, use the zoom extents function. So another function that a lot of people don't really use very much, but can be very, or it can save you a lot of time is say that I wanted to zoom in right here to this object. Now I can definitely scroll up and down, but if you want to cut down on your scrolling and be really precise with your zooming, you can click on the button right here in order to do a zoom window. Zoom window allows you to draw a box around an object like this, and it's going to automatically center that object in your scene. So you can use this in order to quickly pick a location and zoom in on it without having to do a whole bunch of additional scroll. All right, and so I think it's fair to say that in general, navigating around the exterior of a SketchUp model is not the problem. It's definitely navigating around the interior of your models. Well, a lot of people don't know there's actually a great tool set in here for working in more of a first person view. And so first off, especially with a building like this one, getting in here and setting up your camera can actually be a little bit time consuming. So I'm going to jump over into more of a lightweight style. So in this case, I think this was the shaded mode. And the nice thing about the shaded mode is it's not loading in my textures either. But one thing that can be valuable if you're having trouble setting up your different camera views is it can be valuable to use a section cut in order to get into the building and set those views up. So in this case, I already have a section cut, which I'm just going to toggle on by going over into my, um, my display settings. I'm going to toggle section cuts on. Well, what that does is now I can actually see inside of the space and I can set up my camera view. So I can come down here, kind of set that view up, and then I can toggle those section cuts back off after I've saved a view in here. And so um, the section cuts is really valuable. Another thing that's really valuable when you're trying to set up an interior view is when you orbit around, it's moving the camera, right? Which is fine for exteriors because you want to go around an object. When you get into an interior space, though, you want your camera to stay in one place, a place that you've set. And then you want to change the direction that it's looking. Well, if you click on this button right here and do a look around, you can click and drag and set the direction that your camera is looking. And so what I can do is I can kind of pan a little bit. I can set my camera view up and then I can toggle these section cuts off. And then I could come in here. I could save a new scene. So I'm going to click in here, save a new scene like this. And again, now I can get back to the scene really quickly. Now, in this case, this scene has a style that's showing the section cuts. I'm just going to click on update and click on OK. And we can update that current style in order to update that. But now I'm able to quickly navigate around between these different views just like this. And while we're talking about setting up your interior views, and I'm going to toggle my section cut back off, say that you wanted to set up a view based on a certain point looking in a certain direction, you can actually use the position camera tool to do that. 
So if I click in here to set the position camera tool, this tool allows me to click to set a point, right? Like this. And that's fine. But what a lot of people don't know is you can use the position camera tool in order to click and drag on a point in order to set a camera direction. So if I activate position camera and click and drag, notice how I can set this up where my camera is going to be looking at this chair right here. Now that by itself can be a little bit annoying because it drops you on the ground, but you can actually type in a value for your eye height. So in this case, I would just add an extra probably five feet. So I'm going to type in an eye height of 11 foot, three inches, hit the enter key. And notice what that does is that'll set your camera at the height that you typed in here. And I could come back in here and toggle my section cuts back off, but notice how I can use this in order to really quickly set up my camera based on a central point right here. Okay. And so one other thing that um, can be a little bit frustrating when you're working with camera views is sometimes when you start getting into tight spaces, right? Like this one, it can just be difficult to get everything to show up in your view. Well, you can actually set the field of view of your camera using the zoom tool. So if I click in here and I click on zoom, notice how right now, if I click and drag up and down, it's just going to zoom in and out. But notice how there's an option in here that says shift to change field of view. So notice how my field of view is 35 degrees right here. Well, I can either hold the shift key and click and drag and notice how this is going to take my camera field of view and make it wider or narrower, or I could just type in a value like 55 and hit the enter key. Notice when I do that, that's going to change the field of view of my camera so that I can see more. So I can use the zoom tool and the field of view function in order to set how much is seen by your camera. Now, one thing to note about that is if you set that field of view super wide, you start getting a little bit of distortion in your scene, kind of like a fisheye lens. So you want to be a little bit careful with that. But that field of view function can really help you dial in your camera views in SketchUp. All right, so those tips should save you a ton of time for navigating around inside of your SketchUp models. I know they help me with interiors a lot, but leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any navigation tips for navigating in SketchUp free. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.